We could concentrate on an intelligent plan of stewardship instead of anti-human environmentalism. Along the lines of the plans outlined by multifaceted and diligent experts such as Dr. Bjorn Lomberg, who pointed out years ago that we have a multitude of crises facing us, and not just one, the hypothetically apocalyptic danger of carbon, and that we could spend the money we are wasting killing poor people in a much more intelligent and judicious manner, devoting some resources, for example, to ensuring a stable food supply to poor children in the developing world, treating malaria, something we can do and cheaply, and delivering fresh water where it is truly needed. We could as well work out the details of a truly sustainable agriculture with the most expert farmers to improve the quality of our soil and air and provide everyone with enough high quality food, which will most definitely involve animal-based agriculture. We could bring a halt to the presumption that the state should extend itself by dint of its hypothetical moral superiority to the governance of how we heat our houses and feed and provision our own families. We could, finally, delegate authority to the most local possible of levels, following the principle of subsidiarity, and produce a hierarchy of responsibility that extends necessary purpose to everyone individually, identifying the real danger. As the psychologist Carl Jung said in the aftermath of the Nazi atrocities and the use of nuclear weapons, quote, it is becoming more and more obvious that it is not starvation, not microbes, not cancer, but man himself who is mankind's greatest danger. For the simple reason that there is no adequate protection against psychic epidemics, which are infinitely more devastating than the worst of natural catastrophes. That great man knew that technological man had a stark choice in front of him to become as ethical as he had become powerful and that a real hell awaited if we refused the challenge.